Everybody and welcome to episode 111 of the I Rock Knits podcast. I am so glad to be with you. This is going to be a bit of a different podcast this week. I don't have a sweater. I don't have a shawl. I'm going to keep it short and simple. I'm also going to be putting up a recap video of the sign off messages that I use at the end of the podcast. So for new viewers who are confused, <laughs> by the stories behind each of the sign off messages at the end of the podcast, I will be putting uh, together a little uh, short explanation of each of those phrases so that you can all be in the know. So I'll be putting that up separately, but it will kind of be a part of this week's upload. Um, I am wearing my little Elfie gnome Christmas cheer. I wish you could all see it for the whole podcast. I guess I could like <laughs> wear it <laughs> Wear it like that, but anyway, so they're kind of cute and cheerful. I have some finished objects. I have some works in progress that I'm going to share, and I also have some Christmas socks. So I thought I would go through those and then just call it a day because it's been crazy busy around here. We probably got about six inches of snow this week. Um, Ross has shoveled four or five times. We got a big dumping of snow on must have been Wednesday into Thursday. We had a holiday gathering with a few of my husband's coworkers last Friday night. We cooked for everyone. Um, it was a smaller group, but still a ton of work, right? When you're making dinner and appetizers and desserts for everyone. And then on Tuesday, I had a group of knitters here from uh, the library, mostly women that I have taught how to knit who still gather. And so they came out on Tuesday and we had a taco bar and that was lovely. We had way too much food, but that was really fun. And then on Thursday, I had to cancel uh, the party because it was just really snowing. It was hard to know if people would be able to get home. I, I still think now, in hindsight, we could have had it, but the, the roads and the driveways were filling up with snow for, for people to get home afterwards and then not be able to get in their driveway. I mean, I have a big truck, so for me, it's never a problem, but other people. So we did cancel. So I have to figure out when I can reschedule that. I know a lot of people are out of town this coming week. So I don't know if that's even going to work. But anyway, I thought I would start with just sharing a couple of really fun Christmas hat projects that I that I finished so that you could kind of get in the spirit with me. So the first one that I finished is this. It's called Dark Cherry Sunday. It looks just like Dark Cherry Sunday, doesn't it? This is Fiber Nip Dye Works Worsted Weight Self Striping. It is very difficult to find self striping worsted weights. Um, there are some out there, but sometimes it's really a little hard to put your hands on some, but they knit up so quickly. They're super fun to make. And then I used all the leftovers to make a giant full pom pom. So that one's kind of cute. And that one is going to the woman in South Dakota who saved me when she drove me to the event when I had a flat tire. If you'll remember in September, I decided that this was in a little project bag that was about half done and I wanted to send her a gift card and a little thank you um, because she went home and got her truck that day and put all seven of my suitcases in the back. Remember I was teaching and then she drove me into town, which was seven miles, and then all the way across town out to the area, um, kind of the fairgrounds area where I would be teaching. And so I did get her card that day. And so I thought I'm going to send this to that gas station restaurant that I pulled into when I had that terrible blowout. So she'll be getting this one. I did make the pom-pom removable. I always do this. I use a little button and I just tie a bow. That makes it easy to untie it if you want to ever wash it or if you just wanna take the pom-pom off. So I will put a little note in there for her about that. Um, she may not be a hat wearer, but this can be a car hat, right? I think every everybody should have a hat and mittens in their car at all times if you live in the upper Midwest or Canada or any snowy area, just in case you get you know, stuck or it starts snowing when you're somewhere and you come out and you're freezing, you could have a hat to put on. And then this one is for me because 
This is named Good and Plenty. And I love black licorice. Not all black licorice, but I do like black licorice. That's not for everybody. But um, the pink and black and white. And so I took a picture of it with a Good and Plenty box of candy and put it on my project page. But I have been wanting to finish this for a long time. So I dug out all this worsted self-striping that I had in my box and just got these knit up and uh, made for the holiday. And I just think they're festive, even if they're not Christmas colors, they're just kind of fun. Uh, we had an ugly sweater contest at church this morning. So I wore my llama sweater to church, but that thing is getting, it's that fleece one. I know I've worn it before here, but it's kind of, uh, not fleece, it's fuzzy yarn, very fuzzy yarn. And that has two llamas, but the neckline is, is so wide. Kept, sliding off my shoulder and it was just driving me nuts. So when we got home, I swapped it out. <laughs> so I don't know who won the contest because we didn't stay after church. They, they have it every year. Everybody kind of is festive. And then, um, hey bud, you wanna go under the table? Good boy. Um, Cody's doing great, by the way. We had him in at the vet. He's the longest living dog she's ever seen with the cancer that he has, which was, he had a little skin rash under his arms. He seemed itchy. And so I went in, so I got some mousse to put on that. But anyway, he just ran over. Um, but everybody's, you know, kind of decorated up. And then the the top two or three people that they kind of choose, it's just for fun, get a gift certificate to give to the charity of their church, choice. So it's kind of fun to participate and <coughs> be a part be a part of that. Then I finished my second Sophie scarf. I made it narrower and not super long. This is for a um, a gift, I think, or it's going in the gift box. So I didn't make it super long, but it's definitely not as wide as the first one I made. And about the, it's a little bit longer. I haven't blocked this one yet and the other one is blocked. So I do think it will probably stretch to about there. But those are real easy. The first one I made, I thought it was a pain. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't like the way the increases happened along the edge. Um, I thought they showed a little bit. Um, but then you could count them. And so then in the second one, it was it's just a breeze. It just wasn't hard at all. Very memorizable. I don't know why I struggled with that first one. You know, sometimes your head just isn't in quite the right quite the right place. All right, I just have a real quick and easy recipe this week. It is for lo mein. If you are not a fan of Chinese or Asian food, um, you may never make this kind of food, but we were talking to the kids last night and they often make stir fry. They buy rice at Costco in the big giant bags, so they make rice a lot. And uh, we were talking about making food where you can just use all the leftover vegetables that you have. So I thought, oh, this will be perfect. So you can use um, egg noodles or make noodles, or you can buy spaghetti noodles, or you can use rice noodles, whatever you prefer in this recipe. And then you slice a couple of carrots, um, some yellow onion, a, uh, three cups of cabbage, uh, some garlic, a bunch of green onion, and then there's a sauce to put on it. So there's a dark soy sauce, a regular soy sauce, brown sugar, water, sesame oil, cornstarch, white pepper, and oyster sauce. You mix that all together. And then if you have leftover broccoli, leftover corn, leftover zucchini, any, any type of vegetable, or you just have a crisper drawer full of vegetables that seem like they're on the edge, like mushrooms or celery or anything, like if you have a vegetable tray left over from a party, fried rice or lo mein, is great. So I thought it was perfect for, we're going into the holidays here and we all have these leftovers. What can you make with them? So I will post that in the Ravelry group so that you can go over and grab it, but you can also just Google any lo mein recipe or stir fry recipe. But since we had had that conversation um, with the kids last night, I thought, oh, that's perfect for today. I have a couple of things to share um, from the internet quickly. I saw this just darling idea and I thought it was so cute. It comes from Tangled Poets on Instagram, and it's a little pickle jar full of mini skeins. If you need to gift someone something for the holiday, 
you could just put together a bunch of mini skeins, make them up, use your fingering weight yarn, wrap them up into small skeins, you know, wrap off 10 grams or 20 grams and make a little pickle jar kit, put it in a jar, tie it with a bow. So great last minute gift for a, a knitting friend, right? Or a knitting group. I just thought it was so cute. I mean, you don't have to put a label on it. You could just tie it up, but doesn't that make it cute? It'd be cute to display in someone's house. Yeah, I thought it was really cute. So I wanted to share that before the holiday. I saw another Christmas sweater. This is by Philco Lana Santa Baby. And this is a little Christmas tree sweater, little pine trees. But the person that knit it did the cuffs at the bottom in the, of the hem in green and then decorated a couple of the trees. So they put a star and some sequins and some beads and some candles on a couple of the trees. Is that cute or what? Yeah. So the design is from Hannah Rimmon and it's the ready for Christmas um, post uh, for, from this person, Knit Just Knit, um, who freestyled the decoration. So I just took a screenshot and printed it out, but I thought it was very cute. And then I feel like, you know, the holiday seasons for everyone can be a, a definitely a time of giving and sharing, you know, what you have. And there was a post on, um, Reddit about fulfilling wishes for foster kids. I went to the website onesimplewish.org, which specializes in providing foster kids with things they wouldn't ordinarily get. An 11 year old was asking for a bike for his birthday, but his foster family couldn't afford to buy him one. For less than $200, I paid for the kid's new bike. But I thought I would share that onesimplewish.org. And maybe that could become a holiday tradition or a holiday special thing that you do with your grandchildren or your children. And you go in on your computer and you pick out a wish that someone, a foster child, is looking for. And you gift, you know, an item. I have a tickle in my throat. I don't know why. All of a sudden, when I started talking. So I'm just going to try to keep coy because I cough and I wait and I cough and I wait. And I drink some water and it's still there. So excuse my little tickle. Um, oh, I'm sure many of you have given already and donated or whatever, but if you are looking for something, I thought that I could share that. Okay. I started knitting the kids' Christmas stockings that they picked out. So I thought I would share those quickly. So I don't know if I'll get them done by, you know, I would have liked to have had them done this weekend. So I'm not very far and it has a halfway point. So this is one side edge and this is the other side edge. So it has this like little frame that goes and then it's a reverse of the front side on the back. So you are reversing the chart. So that doesn't look like I got very far right, but I'm knitting these in tandem. So I knit this one to a certain point and then I picked up this one and then I go back to this one so that when I get done, I don't, and then that way I'm repeating the same rows. So it's a little bit easier to follow the chart when I do 10 rows on one, 10 rows on the other, because then I kind of remember the repeats and what's going on. And so it's made it kind of easy. So now I'm just starting the, the top of the Christmas tree on this one and I'll have a little red cardinal. And then on this one, it's gonna have a white bear. So I bought a different pattern and I'm gonna use the chart for the bear on this one so that they will kind of match. So yeah, I mean, I'm getting there, but it's very chart driven. I have to really, because the snowflakes aren't the same and these little random spots are not, they're not, they don't stack. So you kind of just have to count all the time. I like doing color work like this. I find it very kind of <clears throat> motivating to keep going. And then I'm knitting one more hat. <laughs> Everybody's getting hand knits this year for Christmas. I have presents under the tree and um, that's a whole nother thing that I'll tell you about. But so this is uh, Chelsea Yarns uh, and it's kind of got 
Christmas colors in it, but not really. It's kind of cute. So I'll put a pom-pom on this one. I think this is for my niece-in-law. I don't know if she'll wear it, but I, I made stuff for the girls, the little girls. So they're getting hats and mittens, which I showed way back last summer. A little green and pink striped mittens and hat. I don't know if you'll remember, but so yeah, I'm trying to put together stuff for everybody in Sioux Falls. We were supposed to go Friday to South Dakota, but we got so much snow and they got nine inches on Tuesday of last week. And then they got the bitter cold and the blowing. So we called my parents on Thursday night and said, it is probably not worth us to drive. We will, it's about four hours. Um, if you stop in halfway and get a drink or go to the bathroom. Um, and it would have taken us like six or seven, right? Like it just, we would have driven, been driving it partly in the evening, in the dark. And we go through Wyndham, Minnesota, which is halfway kind of between the two on a southwest angle down. And, or yeah, southwest angle. But there is a ridge line a geographical ridge line that runs through that part of the country. So there are hundreds of windmills because it's always windy. I've said this before. You can leave here in sunshine and you can have sunshine in Sioux Falls, but you get to Wyndham and there's going to be a blizzard. <laughs> and we know that after 30 years of driving back and forth, that it's just probably not worth it to go through Wyndham. And my husband has off next week. And so he just said, you know what? We have time. We can just watch the weather and go another time. So Friday night, we decided to go out to dinner and the roads were terrible, terrible. So I was so glad. I was mad that we weren't going because I really needed to go and see my parents. But once we were on the roads on Friday night, I was like, oh, I'm so glad we are not driving, you know, <laughs> far in this because... The, the, it was blowing across and there was kind of slushy ice all on the roads and so not worth it even in the four-wheel drive giant heavy truck that I that I drive okay let's get into some socks I don't have tons of information on all of these but I pulled them out because I thought it might be kind of festive so here is the first pair and these are called opposites attract the yarn is from Barking Dog, and they the shop is on vacation right now, but you could go to Etsy and put a little, they have the little box that you can check to get notifi notified when the shop reopens. But she does these two different colors that are opposing, like green with red and red with green. But she also does them in blue with brown and brown with blue and those kinds of things too. So it's called Mr. and Mrs. Claus. And the um, yarn base is just uh, merino, the superwash nylon, and uh, but Amber cranked tubes for me of all the Christmas socks in 2020. And then they sat there for a really long time before all that was needed was heels, toes, and cuffs, but the tubes just sat there. So that's why I thought, well, I've shared some of these um, on the podcast during the sock episode, but... Um, these are kind of fun for Christmas. And then this pair is called Spinning Fates yarn. It's a Tula sock, that's the base, in the peppermint twist colorway. It is uh, kind of just red and white, but it bled. So all the white turned pink. And that is probably the biggest issue I have with reds and whites, which is why there's a big note in the sock yarn pattern that I just did for the chim chimney socks that if you are going to use red and white in those socks you need to put your red in some water beforehand and make sure it's not going to bleed right so just take a little piece throw it in some water put some wool wash in it if that's how you're going to wash it or put it in the washing machine if that's how you're going to wash it put it in a little bag or whatever and just see put it in with something like a white washcloth or cloth or something and see if it gets pink because it would be such a bummer to wash something and have it turn pink. I think they're still cute because they kind of look like peppermint twist, but I was bummed that they turned. This is not really Christmas colorway, but I think it's Christmassy. 
Uh, the, the colorway is called Aquamelon, so it's kind of supposed to be watermelon, but I think with the green, it just turned out so fun. And these, this stitch pattern is really fun. This is the Jaywalker socks, and you just have that little uh, decrease-increase situation going on. So you get these chevrons, which are super fun, up here, and then they just go straight down the bottom. This is by Vesper Sock Yarn in the Aquamelon colorway. And Vesper Sock Yarn is, well, it was always Amber's favorite. I mean, she loved Vesper Sock Yarn. She knits a lot of Vesper, but that was that was definitely fun. And then this is just the last pair. This Knitter's is Nightmare yarn, uh, Knitter's Nightmare. And um, she was a yarn dyer here in Minneapolis and she passed away at a very young age suddenly. And so this is her colorway. Um, and I just thought it was really, really cute. Kind of Christmassy, right? With the red heels, toes, and cuffs. This was all cut in, into the, cut in the heel, and then the toes and the cuffs are added. So the tubes were cranked, but that was kind of fun. So those are the, <laughs> Sock, Christmas socks of the week. I just brought out four pair. I think I have, I think Ross has two pair and Kylie has two or three pairs of Christmas socks. So on my projects page, I had a lot more Christmas socks, but in my particular box, I had four pair and I thought, okay, I'm just gonna share those with everyone a little bit this week. If you are not a football fan, you can tune out for about a minute here, but the Minnesota Vikings, my team of choice, had the largest upset in NFL history yesterday. It was the saddest game ever in the first half. We were down 33 to zero, zero. And we have won 10 games this season. And the other team has a new coach. They fired the coach. They have not been doing well. And we're down 33 to zero at halftime and people left the stadium. It was here in the cities. It was horrific. And we came back and tied the game. And one of our players at halftime was talking to his group, trying to rev them up. And he said, this is what we heard on the news. He said, we just need five touchdowns, <laughs> which is like, there are some games they don't get one touchdown, right? So the fact that we came back, everything that could have gone wrong in the first half went wrong. We fumbled. We had calls that were mismanaged. We, um, and even some of the national guys are admitting that, you know, there were a couple of mistakes where they, they blew the whistle too soon. The ball wasn't dead. It was a fumble. Our guy picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown, but it didn't count because they'd blown the whistle. You know, stuff like that. Like there were just multiple. <laughs> we had an interception. Like everything that could go wrong just continued to go wrong. We had pen a penalty. One of our guys slipped and just fell, like just planted his foot and just like fell down. There was no one even around him. Like you, your mouth was just like hanging open. And then we came back, it was overtime. We 36-36, it's tied at the end of the game. Went into overtime, we get the ball, we can't move, don't do anything. They get the ball, they can't do anything. We get it back and we score a field goal. It was, it, I mean, the games, the NFL wants games with high points, right? Scoring is fun for people to watch. So they want all the games to have high points. <laughs> 39, 36. It was so fun. We had friends go into the game with their family. They'd never been. They spent a ton of money to go to the game. And in the whole first half, all we could say to one another was, oh, I feel so bad for that. I feel so bad that they're at their game with their, this game with their son and daughter. And we are down 33-0. <laughs> so anyway, enough about that. But it was a pretty incredible day for us yesterday. I, maybe that's why my throat is a little, I mean, I really, I yelled a couple times at the TV and I stood up and Ross came forward and sat on the coffee table. I mean, we, we were screaming at each other and yelling and oh my gosh, I get really into it. And I don't even like 
hit. Like, I don't like big hits. I feel so bad. Like, they carted someone off from Chicago today in a, on a cart. And I, my, I just am so empathetic. My heart just, you know, and I hate it when they hit their helmets head to head and stuff. <laughs> but I really like watching. So, anyway. No trip to Sioux Falls and the biggest upset in NFL history. That Those are your two <laughs> little Corey stories today. Um, I did buy some more of those little pouches for your purse and they came in the mail. So I thought I would just share them. Um, you can use this as a little notions pouch. This plastic is real soft and pretty bendable. Um, I've had mine in my purse now for a couple months and it's just great. It's very narrow. So I can slide like just about anything <clears throat> in it. Here I have some remotes and some stuff here. I've got this and what else could I put in here to kind of show you guys? I've got some giveaways today. Like I just keep shoving stuff in here, but I mean, it, it can hold like quite a, I mean, you could just really fill it up. And I have two in my purse and I really like that they're keeping my purse more organized and I can see like they sit upright and so I can see them to pull them out when I need them. I put a bunch of um, charging cords, like my remote chargers in one to keep those all separate because I had like two, a charger and a long cord and you know, I don't know, I just think they're great. So here's the bright colored one. I have one like this and then here's another one and she still has a couple of these in her shop. So um, you can go over on Etsy and take a look at them. The name of the shop is Cloud Nine Stitchery. All one word, Cloud9 Stitchery on Etsy. Then I purchased a couple of these little bags, which were my favorite. I should grab the other one. So this is a squishable bag. The fabric is not cotton. It's very soft. I would say it's probably a polyester. It's very thin. It's almost like a silky jersey. So this is my original one. It's got the dog. And it came in blue and pink. It was, it's just my favorite bag. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, you know, I can put a hat, a socks, two skates in it, scrunch it up. So there, there was a tag in here. And so I Googled the lady, cause I couldn't remember where, I was at an event when I bought it and it's Becca Ron. And so I just said to her, would you be willing to make some more up? I see you look like you have one or two in your, <clears throat> she said, sure. So she said, I would like, I said, I really like the bright colors. So she made this one up this week and they just have a little square bottom, but they're very squishy and super soft. And then this is the black one. So I have this one. Actually, I think I have another one in the other room too. I think it's a pink one with dogs on little dogs on it. Um, little um, dancing poodles or something. And it is a drawstring project bag for $22. They're $22. That's what they were. And she had a few um, still left. Um, but I think you could also ask her if she has any more of this fabric. And then I also got a new pair of the earrings that are designs by Yasmin. Of course, like orange. So... They finally came in the mail. I'd not finally, but I had I'd ordered them not that long ago, and they weren't supposed to come until January because she makes them to order, <clears throat> and then they finally they just showed up one day. So I thought those would be really cute, fun to wear. She has great big ones, but these are smaller, and I liked them better. So designs by Yasmin. I'm sure if you've been out on any of the local podcasts, you know you know that name. I have a giveaway to do before we close here. And I count, I did the random number generator from the comments from last week. The generator picked number 14 and that is Gina Thompson. So Gina, please get in touch with me and I will send out your little um, package in the mail. It had your, um, it had the earrings that I showed last week, the little felted earrings in there and then it had a stitch mark marker gauge and that's all going to Gina Thompson and then next week I have 
for next time, I have three little things to give away here. And so there's a stitch marker holder, little wolf howling at the moon. There is a little fox pin, which is just really pretty. So if you're into fox. Um, and then there's a little mushroom stitch marker. So that is all going out next time. For anyone who comments um, in the show notes, below the show notes, I will draw. And I will also be giving away a couple of patterns. So I will do a drawing and you can choose um, from my pattern collection um, anything you might like to be gifted just as my holiday gift to you. So I'll be giving away quite a few of those. Um, from the comments underneath this video. So it will come up in two weeks. I will draw and kind of be my holiday gift to all of you. I have three audiobooks to tell you about this two weeks that I have finished. And the first one is called Night Crawling. And it is a New York Times bestseller, an Oprah Book Club book pick, a Booker Prize long list, um, many, many awards, best book of the year, by many newspapers and it's a tough read. Um, Kira and her brother Marcus are scraping by in an East Oakland apartment complex optimistically called the Regal High. Both have dropped out of high school, their family fractured by death and prison. But while Marcus clings to his dream of rap stardom, Kira hunts for work to pay their rent, which is more than doubled, and to keep the nine-year-old boy next door abandoned by his mother safe and fed. One night, what begins as a drunken misunderstanding with a stranger turns into the job Kira never imagined wanting, but ne now desperately needs night crawling. It goes into a situation where she gets um, into the justice system. The police officers misuse her um, terribly. Um, then they want to, her, uh, the lawyers want her to file a report against all these police officers it it is just a really great story but hard difficult um read about a young girl who is 17 when some of this happens and then turns 18 which is part of the the problem in the story it was an 11 hour book um if if you want to read about um the african-american black experience um and the poverty that this these two young kids are living in it is it's hard to believe um but very moving so that was book number one book number two was much lighter uh which is kind of how i like to read is to kind of go you know back and forth in between the life chloe brown it's by talia hibbert and this is a trilogy so there are three books in this series about one each about each of the brown sisters and this is light and charming and funny and interesting um it is a romance definitely a romance and you know is a little graphic so i would like to put that out there uh, chloe brown is a chronically ill computer geek with a goal a plan and a list so she does have fibromyalgia, which is very close to my heart. Um, reading about someone who is in pain often and takes a lot of medication to try to, to get by in life. Um, after all, but not quite dying, she's come up with seven directives to help her get a life and she's already completed the first. Finally moving out of her glamorous family mansion. Uh, enjoy a drunken night out, ride a motorcycle, go camping, have meaningfully meaningless but thoroughly enjoyable sex travel the world with nothing but hand luggage and do something bad is on her list and she doesn't know how she's going to accomplish it because she's fairly disabled um and then red morgan is a handyman with two tattoos a motorcycle and more sex appeal than ten thousand hollywood heartthrobs he's also an artist who paints at night and hides his work in the light of day and these two meet and um, she has been mistreated by her friends and her family because of her chronic illness, which is really hard for them to understand. And it it just really touched me, her story. Um, but again, definitely some gratuitous sex in this book. Um, 
but he is just a lovely character that you fall in love with. So I, I would recommend this one, if, especially if you're a, a romance reader. And then the last one I read is called This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub. She's very popular. This was probably not my favorite um, book, but on the eve of her 40th birthday, Alice's life isn't terrible. She likes her job, even if it isn't exactly the one she expected. She's happy with her apartment, her romantic status, her independence, and she ador in adores her lifelong best friend. But her father is ailing and it feels as if something is missing. When she wakes up the next morning, she fells, finds herself back in 1996, reliving her 16th birthday. So this is a tra time travel book uh, because it goes back in time and tells the story, but she literally goes back in time and then comes to the present and then goes back in time and comes to the present. So you have to be able to suspend that disbelief. I don't mind tri time travels. I just didn't think that this one, um, when you go back to when you're 16 and the mistakes you made when you were 16 and the things you wanna rectify from when you were a young person, you know, that's just tough, right? Those are hard years. You have a lot to learn. And I think sometimes you just need to forgive yourself and move on. Um, but it was well-written. Um, it, it, she did a nice job. It was a nine hour audio book. I'd probably give it like three stars. So those are your three audio books for this. Week. I want to give everyone just all the blessings in the world um, and hope that those of you that get tired or sad or down or just struggle during this time um, that I can hold you and lift you up and hopefully have everyone um, laugh a bit and have a little bit of a celebration. I was going to do a live on Monday and I didn't, I didn't have anybody comment that I should go ahead and do the live and I'm super busy. I have lots of knitting design work to do and I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to do a short little podcast, get something out there to everyone just to wish them a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah to a few of my Jewish friends. Um, and then next time we'll go back to kind of having more of a regular podcast. But just know that you're going to have two podcasts that come up. This one will come up first and then just following maybe the next day, the recap of all of the little phrases from the end of the podcast that go like this. <laughs> Keep your fork. Keep it colorful, waddle on, no green bananas, don't complain with your mouth full, you'll never regret ripping back, and buy the gravy. Until next time, come in for your hug. I've been hugging since the beginning of the pandemic, just giving you guys all just some uplifting, and some blessings. I just hope that each of you can get through the, the next couple weeks and nobody has terrible weather and um, we can get into the new year and we can knit and have some time to have some downtime and um, some relaxation, which, you know, all my knitting is not very relaxing these days. I've been having uh, lots of pain with my fibromyalgia and the, the weather systems used to think my grandma Winnie was kind of crazy. She had terrible arthritis and she's not related to me because she's my mom's stepmother. But to say art, my art is telling me that we're going to get a storm and I thought that was crazy. And now we, if when we get these big, my whole body just really reacts. So I need to get in for a massage. <laughs> I went to the chiropractor this week and he worked on my sore shoulder and uh, some of my muscles to try to get those firing again because I get kind of off kilter, but I hope that you all have just a really nice two weeks and we'll see you soon. Bye.
Thank you.